Welcome to the You Can Man podcast, episode three. I'm Josh. I'm Tim. And I'm Dave. And on today's episode, DIY philosophy. Okay, welcome back to episode three. So, Tim, I drove by your house today, saw you out in the front yard with your Explorer's hood up. What was going on? Yes. In the front yard or in the drive? It well, was in the grass. It was in the grass. This is Georgia. There's a reason why it's in the grass, because I had to run to the auto parts store, so I had to move it out of the driveway so I could take the minivan nice. out of the garage, so I had to move it off the driveway into the yard. That's why I was in the yard. I know. It probably looked It weird. wasn't on blocks. It wasn't on blocks. That's an important, a very important note. So last night I was driving, looked down at my temperature gauge, and that joker's way high, Oof. and it never is. Mm. The, my, that engine is always just so running so right in the middle or cool. What year is this Explorer? 1998. Oh, yeah. I was actually thinking that I would I would kind of like to do an entire podcast dedicated to my 1998 Explorer. I rode in it two days ago. It's still nice. It's comfortable. <laughs> it's plush. It's Eddie Bauer. Right? Look, y'all, I graduated high school in 1999. And so at that time, I looked at a 1998 Ford Explorer, Eddie Bauer, and thought that that was just it was primo top of the top. Baller. That's what Absolutely. rich suburbanites drove. Yes, yeah, and I own one now, guys. <laughs> you've, Good you've for you. The top. <laughs> yeah. You okay, it's it. got a hundred and eighty. Uh, no, I think it's a hundred eighty-four thousand miles. If I'm not mistaken, that's not bad. That's I, well I loved. Like it's, I feel like it's one eighty-two or one eighty-four. It's it's over one eighty, and I bought that in. 2010. So I'm coming up on, you know, good solid eight and a half years because I think it was the latter part of 2010 and it had just under 100,000 miles. I paid less than $4,000 for it. Nice. It's cool. incredible. So, so what's going on with the tent? Sorry. Did you get that You asked fixed? me what was wrong with it. So it was running hot and I got a coolant leak somewhere and I don't know where it's going. I think that it's right up underneath my thermostat housing. I don't know, but I was se- severely low on coolant. Mm. It's fixed now. So did you see him and then you went and helped him or did you no, just no, drive on just by? Kept I, I drove saw him. by. Nice. I saw him drive by. <laughs> I, was, I was on a mission. I was working from home, so I had to go in and out for my breakfast and, uh, yeah. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Yeah, hey. right there. Couldn't, uh, yeah, couldn't <laughs> stop Let me get you help. something. For Sorry, those of you, next time. for those of you that don't know, Josh and I live right across the street. So when he's driving down the road, he's, there's he's, there's he's, no he's hiding me. from each other, is there? Exactly. Yeah. So, um, anything else exciting, Dave, in your world? No, no? nothing exciting this Super week. Boring. Well, uh, I'll mention at my office job, we are undergoing renovations, and Us too. Uh, on on our floor. Yeah. So everything's getting freshened up, and I was excited because. In the hallway, I saw tall, full-height bathroom doors stacked, ready to get installed into the bathrooms. Oh, that's so a dream. The, the, you know, the tall, like floor-to-ceiling? Floor-to-ceiling, louvered, nice. wooden doors. Uh, so so you'll, you'll kind of have your own throne room, yeah, if you will. Yeah, it'll, it'll be a little Privacy. classier classier in there. And speaking of classy... That's like Parisians at the mall. They used to have that. It was the best. Yes, yeah. My, and malls used to be nice. Yeah. You're right. Um, the, uh, the thing about the bathroom is, even though I work in a nice office environment with educated, sophisticated people, bathroom etiquette is... Uh, that's always amazes me. We what people that. are capable of... Yeah, and we, we had that as a possible future show idea, did we not? Maybe, yeah, because you or could probably this, do a whole show on I it. I think it was a segment idea. Yeah, we have a rolling ideas list of stuff we're going to talk about, and I'm pretty sure that was on well, there. Well, people, they devolve into animals. Devolve, is that a word? They yeah, devolve into now. animals in the bathroom, Yeah, I, even at work. You'd think yeah. a corporate environment would be a little bit better. It doesn't doesn't Instead do of just no. a gas station public nope. restaurant. Everybody reverts back to, well, not everybody. Not me, but <laughs> a lot of people revert back to yeah. I'm in I'm in fifth grade. Uh, I would see how horrendous I can be, how much <laughs> noise I can matches. make. Yeah, so this is uh, yeah. anyway. That's always that's always a shock in, in the corporate environment. All right, we'll have to definitely bring that topic back up because I want to hear more about it. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, the last thing I wanted to mention is our little debacle with our table, our podcast table. 
Yeah, you guys can't see it, but the table that we're working at right now is, I would say, subpar. It's a plastic folding table. Yeah, yeah. it's about as low rent as you can get. I mean, it works. It holds. Well, it doesn't hold everything up, but yeah, it holds. We're sitting at it currently. Yeah. So the the vision, you know, is to have a, a round table so that we can all kind of see each other. This is a rectangular table. It's a little awkward uh, sitting you know, and you, talking with everyone. You would think that given our show topic, we just make ourselves a, a table. Wow, right? that hits close to home. Josh yeah. calls it the vision. It was a round table. It was not a well-communicated vision because yeah. I offered up a table. I said, hey, I've got a, a wooden table yep. that we can use. It was the kitchen table that I grew up at. And uh, everybody was like, that sounds great. So Tim and I went to go get it two days ago in a storage unit. And I opened the door and Tim says, that's not a round table. It's not and I said, table. no, it's not. I yeah. never said it was. So okay. there, was a lot of, there was a lot of context involved. But apparently Tim and I had... Because of the discussion of a round table, we thought Dave was offering up a round table. Right. So we, we've been looking on Craigslist. Or no, well, not Craigslist. Maybe Facebook I looked on Craigslist. Marketplace. Facebook Marketplace. This is a new Craigslist. <laughs> Anyways, it's we'd the been, better Craigslist. I guess right? so. We'd been looking for a round table. Dave knew this. Everyone well, knew I did this. not. We thought Dave knew this. <laughs> okay. And then the day that we go to the storage unit, literally an hour before... Hey Dave, can we, can we go get that round round table? Yeah, and he just I missed that. I so we not. drove all the way over to this storage unit near. I'm his a speed reader. I don't read every place. word. And yeah. Anyway, Waste we're still shape. at the we're still at the cruddy table. Um, yeah. So but to to kind of put a bow on that, we didn't. We never said specifically, except in a text, to <laughs> Dave. <laughs> We're going to get a round table or we require a round table or we thought you were bringing Look, a round now table. now I know. All right. But now Dave knows. But that's fine because, you know, occasionally I may have a little miscommunication with my wife where I think we're on the same page. Turns out we're not. Happens regularly enough to where I'm going to I'm going to look in the mirror, take a little ownership of the situation and say, did did I communicate that clearly or did I just assume that the other person was thinking like me and was on the same page? I think we can all, you know, take yeah. a little ownership of it and, and we can move on. And just to let our listeners know, it, I had to like hook up the trailer. We had to drive across town. So it wasn't just just down the road. So that, that's what made it's it close enough. It was right by so your. If you can envision, you know, Dave opening the the storage room door and i'm like uh it was close to harbor freight we should have just that stopped is by and that is true it was close to the, the harbor freight that's near and dear to my heart and i do go there often so you could have at least coupled it with a trip to harbor freight but we ran out of time i should have so. thought about that anyway we all okay. we all had a good laugh especially me from my office oh i laughed all, really hard they it. were out actually doing the work but anyway to uh to get back on topic i'll hand it over to tim yeah, so DIY philosophy. So I would like to talk a little bit about the why behind the name You Can Man. So how did I come up with the name You Can Man? And then also I would like to give, I guess what you could call a mission statement. I kind of call it mm, like almost like an elevator pitch of this kind of sums up what You Can Man is. So to get into the story behind the name You Can Man, Started years ago before I knew how to do a lot of DIY stuff on my house. I had been doing for years a lot of work on cars, but I'd never really done a whole lot of stuff on houses. Uh, big reason being I had my wife and I had rented for years and we didn't own our own home. So I wasn't doing my own work on on houses. But then we bought a house and I was kind of in a world of hurt because I was like, I don't know how to do a lot of this stuff. And you're doing a full renovation, right? Yes. So we went full on and full renovation, basically everything minus the bathrooms. And so we were wanting to take out load-bearing walls and a lot of work. So I was starting to look into contractors, and the the figures were stacking up. It was going to cost ridiculous amount of money to take out these load bearing walls and all this kind of stuff that we wanted to do. But here enters my good friend, Julian, that we went to church with at the time. And he knew how to do all this stuff. He'd been in the construction industry and he was a, being a good neighbor and help and being a good friend and, and showed me how to do a lot of this stuff. And he would always say what one man can do, you can do as well. 
And, you know, you hear that, you're like, "Uh, Julian, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I guess that doesn't apply in all scenarios for sure. But he's really right. If you want to give give it your all, if you want to learn how to do something, what one man can do, you can do as well. Like I said, that's what he would say. So that's where the name You Can Man came from. What one man can do, you can do as well. So we want to encourage guys to tackle DIY projects. Yeah, that 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 other person that can be a catalyst to get you to kind of get your hands dirty or to give you the encouragement or just the, the nudge in the right direction can be so important. So, um, Tim, if you could kind of mention the elevator pitch, if you wanted to boil all that down, what does that look like? Yeah, and this may change, but I think that this statement kind of sums it up pretty well. So I'm actually just going to read it. So here, you can, man, we're about encouraging men to tackle DIY projects from the mundane to the extraordinary for the betterment of themselves so that they can in turn be a blessing to others. I think that encapsulates, yeah, at least right now, what we're about. Um, Dave, if you were to kind of give your quick and dirty philosophy on why you like, why you're into DIY. Um, I guess I'm into DIY because I think it's important for guys to be able to have these skills uh, to do these things around their house so that, you know, when when something comes up, when the when the when the, you know, kitchen faucet breaks or something like that, you know, they can they can take care of it. Uh, You don't have to call somebody, wait for them to come out and get it fixed. You can take care of it on your own. I think it's important for guys to be able to do that. And also it kind of harkens back, uh, you know, to to a past generation where they would pass down these skills uh, you know, your grandfather would teach your dad and your dad would teach you, you know, I, I don't want to lose kind of that, uh, that lineage and, and that, um, those skills that are passed down. I think it's important to keep that going. Yeah. Then there's, there's so many other skills today that weren't even available as far as technology is concerned that, that we're preoccupied with and some good, some bad. So there's no way that, you know, we're going to have all of the knowledge of our grandparents, um, as far as what they were able to do on their farms or in their mechanical shops or whatever, wherever they were working. But yeah, to hang on to at least a piece of what's been given to you and to be able to pass uh, that information and to, and to pass down the confidence. That's kind of, that's kind of a big yeah, thing that we're going to be about is just, you know, just being confident and tackling a project that you may not even know about because, because you've done other types of projects gives you the confidence to take on this new environment, this new project. Yeah. I think that on a base level, tackling any project, but especially working with your hands, there's something about, Doing a project, being able to step back and look and see what you accomplish, something physical that you built that is a real confidence builder that spills over into every other area of your life. Yeah, and this uh, this goes along with um, the, you know, we we won't get into it a whole lot on this episode, but the, the skills gap that's on right now, um, the the different, you know, the, the skills related jobs that are going unfilled because people don't have that hands on that tactile experience. Um, there's something rewarding and there's definitely something dignified about that type of work, whether you do that on a daily basis or whether you can come home and get your hands dirty, whether it's working on the yard or working on your deck. I think most of us at least have felt that, you know, doing that good hard day's work physically and being able being able to step back and like Tim said just take a look at it and feel good about that work I think that's that's invaluable yeah we kind of lost that um I mean when I was growing up there was no question from my parents that I that I wouldn't go to college right like it was almost a requirement you know you go to high school and then you're absolutely going to college and so blue collar was discounted yeah you we just kind of lost that like there was never any thought that hey you could go be a plumber or you could go be a welder um and so you know it's kind of sad that and because there is that skills gap those salaries for those jobs have greatly increased sure you yeah. can um, so Josh mentioned the skills gap. What comes to my mind is Mike Rowe, uh, the host of Dirty Jobs. I guess he's not doing that show anymore, but he's very big into that whole um, narrowing the skills gap. Yeah, thing. he's got the he's got the Mike Rowe Works Foundation. Yeah. So if you're questioning what we're really talking about, definitely check out Mike Rowe. I think that most people listening to this have probably heard his name and kind of know what he's about, but he's really big into that. 
Yeah. So Tim, like you, you personally, you know, you gave us the, the vision of you came at you personally, what, what are you getting out of uh, the DIY environment? Right. When I'm approaching DIY stuff and learning how to do something for me, it's not, it's not so much about saving money. I will say that it was about that earlier on. That was a, that was a major factor, but now not quite as much. For example, I still change my own oil. Now, a lot of guys I talk to, they're like, ah, not worth my time. I'll just take it somewhere. That'd be me. Yeah. Also me. <laughs> but I really enjoy doing that. And it gives me a chance to, you know, assess the health of my car. I'm up underneath sure. it. I'm looking, yeah, is there anything else leaking? Whatever. Uh, just one example. So that's, it, it's not always about, it's not always about saving money. Uh, but it could also be about just the joy of learning a new skill and having those skills so that I can in, then in turn help other people. Because if I'm going to invest the time to learn something, I want to make sure that you know, I'm not going to just, just do it this one time, right? How many times in your life are, are you going to take out the load-bearing wall in your house? I don't know. May, on your own property, that is. Maybe – two three times in maybe, a lifetime because maybe. really you're only going to have probably two maybe three houses i'm never moving <laughs> <laughs> but um you get what I'm, I'm saying so going through that process if it was just for myself would that be worth it i don't i don't know but i'm looking at it in a long-term sense that i can then take the skills that i've put in the hard work to learn and be a real blessing to other people. Yeah, and again, I think this is why we're all around this table, is we we have information, we have encouragement, we have some skills, we have some knowledge that we would love to share with others because we feel like this is a very important part for men especially, and not, not only men, but men especially is our focus here, that, you know, we need more of this. We need more of this in our culture today, in our society today. We just, and it's about, you know, it's not about looking down on people that don't, that aren't comfortable with these skills. It's about kind of encouraging everybody, take on those projects, Absolutely. get your hands dirty. And even if you are starting out and this is about money, that's 100% fine. That's how a lot of us got started is out of necessity. We, we needed, we could not pay top dollar for the great carpenter or the great drywall guy or the, you know, this person to change our oil when, you know, when you're in college and an oil change is 30 bucks or whatever it is, that's, you know, that's getting up there in your budget. So yeah, a lot of, a lot of reasons that, that, that we're here sharing today. Right. That's certainly the reason that I learned to change, to change my, my oil because, you know, when I was in college, I couldn't afford to have anybody, couldn't afford to pay anybody to change it. And, you know, Tim, what you were talking about, or maybe I was talking about kind of passing that down. I think that's like the first thing that like a father teaches their son, right? Like how to change your own oil. This is how it's done. And so that just kind of keeps that going, I think. Yeah. So speaking of that, Tim, what's your earliest DIY memory or, or memory of working with your hands or with tools? Yeah. Just besides I, the blocks at school. Right. I was giving that some thought earlier today because I knew that was going to be one of our questions. And I think the most memorable earlier DIY things that I was doing was for my go-kart. Um, I got a go-kart at age, I think it was 12. I'm so jealous. Uh, was, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm falling was, out of my chair here because you were the, the well, you were, I know. The, yeah, you were and that that's, that's why I was so excited because I thought the same thing. There were some other kids in the neighborhood, or one kid, that had a go-kart, and I was just like, rich. You know, like, <laughs> totally. I mean, who has that? Yeah, like, the rich kid. Richie rich. R the rich kid and the redneck. <laughs> Right. That's who had him. <laughs> and Did yours have a, a flag on it? Um, at the, when I first got it, I but think. That it thing did. came off. You yeah. had to rip it off. When I first got it, it did have. But it had the roll bar. I mean, it was. Oh, wow. That's a it safe was one. Nice. Wow. But my dad showed me because obviously I, I got it. And I, I think I broke it like day two. The chain. Right. I did something. I was rough with it. The chain broke or something. And my dad was patient with me and showed me how to do things. Of course, he was having to pretty much do it himself. But then I had to kind of, you know, learn how to do those things myself as well. So that's probably what really got me started, which then led to working on cars when I was, you know, learning how to drive. My friend Brandon had a 1973 
Really hope I don't mess that up, Brandon. Sorry in advance if I did. Brandon's <laughs> serious, Brandon's serious about his <clears throat> because this car, car year. Yeah, this. Well, he he is. He's very. <laughs> oh, I know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. My good friend Brandon. Sorry, we'll, we'll definitely have him on the show at some time, at some point. But he had a, I think it was a 1973 Ford Maverick. Okay, and that thing needed some work, and so that was my first experience of really doing serious car work. Anyways, but yes, yeah, so if I could go back, earliest real DIY. Uh, memories would be with my go-kart. What about you, Josh? Yeah, so um, my dad was always doing something himself on the house. Um, Whether it was unclogging a sewer drain, he put on an addition, a full sunroom, basement with a bathroom and a laundry room, addition under a house, basically himself. You know, obviously had to help excavating and stuff, but He let me watch. I don't remember helping a whole lot, but I mean, I was right there next to him watching this process. But one of my most vivid first memories was I was probably eight or nine, nine or 10 years old, was a bunch of guys coming over from the church to help my dad install a beam. It was probably about a 20 to 24 foot beam with a flitch plate in the middle. So nice a steel plate sandwiched between two pieces of large lumber because he had taken out a wall in our basement a load-bearing wall and that thing weighed hundreds of pounds maybe even a thousand pounds um and these seven or eight guys from the church rigged up pulleys and ropes and hoisted this thing into place and i just from i just remember as a kid just watching that whole thing and just being enamored with the process and my dad is an aerospace engineer, so he he already had he already had that skill set. Got the he, background. He already understood what he was doing, and he, he had no fear going after that kind of a project. But um, yeah, that just. But at the time, watching that, you probably thought, "My dad's a superhero." No, it was miraculous, <laughs> and, and yeah. I could never do that myself. Yeah. Right? Well, I mean, I don't know. Starting so young, I just remember him doing everything. But I just I thought that's what. That's what people did. Like, yeah, that's normal. All dads can put load bearing walls in. No, that problem. is not normal. Um, but <laughs> so anyway, very blessed to have my dad. And you know, again, we talked about handing down information. I probably only grabbed about fifty percent of his knowledge base, but that that has helped me in my life for sure. How Dave, about you, Dave? What about you? So my dad was not a an aerospace engineer. My dad was uh, an artist is an artist uh but so but he, he was in the marine corps he was in the marine corps uh so yeah he he checked that box but he he wasn't really big into all the, all the diy stuff i think just kind of because he wasn't really interested in doing it now he could do those things like i think i mentioned before he had a 1972 442 and so uh uh he was he was working on that thing and and he would he would change the oil but what he was really really into i think what he was passionate about was his yard like my dad kept an immaculate lawn that is a that is an aspect of diy for sure and i mean i think now that we're all homeowners we can all attest to the fact that you can spend some time in your yard right like that will suck unless you're me yeah yeah unless (laughs) you're tim no but if you put time i mean it, it can it can take an entire day or an entire weekend so that's really where he spent most of his time and his effort was the yard and it looked primo it was really. how much were you out there helping him do that zero he he wouldn't really let I mean I guess he would let me, that but was his escape, it was probably. his yeah it was his escape. He he liked doing it. It was a hobby, and uh, he did a good job with it. It was it was really really nice. Now I do remember us working on cars in high school. I mean I don't I don't think totally. I directly worked with you, but you did have what it was a nineteen ninety three a ninety four ninety four probe Ford, Ford probe. probe. I think it was Cherry GT. Oh yeah, GT. You you did some work on that, right? I did some so a little bit of work more in college, like again out okay. of necessity when it would break down. I think Josh and I lived together, and it sat in the basement for about six months because I couldn't I couldn't fix it. Like it was outside my my ability, so I ended up having a friend come over at one point. You know, after it was sitting for six months. Anyway, it uh it was out of necessity back then, but yeah, I definitely did some car work. Yeah, Tim and I were in the in the driveway every other weekend. Tinkering yeah, on our have, Bronco 2 and our Explorer, which are kind of sister cars. 
Yep, I have lots of memories. Uh, what's coming to mind is changing the shocks on your 1993, mm. 92. Tim's getting it all wrong. <laughs> I'm getting it all wrong. <laughs> 1992 Ford Explorer. I love that yep. thing. Two tone. Oh, it's a great, it's a great truck. Blue. Beautiful. Mm. Yep. Good, good car. As we have other episodes, we're going to expound upon our philosophy behind why we do DIY. But we wanted to kind of give you a primer on on how we on how we do things. And so, hopefully, you guys have got a really good grasp, and we've encouraged you somewhat to start tackling projects and giving you a really good idea behind why we do what we do. Okay, so before we close out this segment, let's talk about one more thing, which is. Today, where do you guys kind of get your inspiration for your projects that you're doing around the house or on the cars or whatever? Where do you where do you go? What are some online resources or other resources that that you're into? I would say hands down, number one, this old house. Classic. Totally. Okay. If you don't know what this old house is, I feel very sorry for you, but you can remedy that because there are 40 years of episodes that you can go watch. A lot of them are on YouTube, right? I'm pretty sure that's right. 40 years, is that right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. They just celebrated 40 years. So it's a PBS show. It's amazing. It it is amazing because it's not like these other shows on HGTV where, okay, we're going to do this renovation. We're going to take out this wall. I'm going to do the new kitchen. And then TV magic. Oh, it's done. No. This old house takes one house per season. And they show you the process of transforming it. So they're going into an old house and renovating. They're taking the time to slow down and show you what they're doing. Um, Now, it's not, you know, detailed down to measurements and in a direct know-how or how-to guide. But you get a really idea of how things are done. Yeah, they spend some time behind the walls. They don't just... Exactly. They don't just sugarcoat it and make it sound easy. They, They get down with the trades and really explain the project of the day that's going on. Right. And they'll even kind of walk through, like when they're doing, um, I don't, I can't think of an example, but they'll kind of walk through a couple of steps on, hey, this is kind of how you do this, and this is what we're doing here. So they do explain things. Yeah. Well, I, got, I, I agree with Tim 100%. Like, this old house is kind of the gold standard for... Yeah, and there's also a companion show, Ask This Old House. Yep, right. More and for I, entertainment. But. Yeah, well, that... Uh, no, I, I really enjoy watching that because it gets down to the normal problems that a homeowner would have. That's true. It does like the weekend job or the day job. Exactly. Like here's how to unclog a pipe or, you know, whatever the quick project is. You know, your toilet is continually running. Well, here's probably why it's running. Yes. And, And those sorts of things. So that is an incredible resource. There's so much stuff. And they've actually done a really good job. They'll take their shows and they'll break it down into segments and put those on YouTube so you don't have to watch an entire thing. You you know if you if you've ever done any searching on YouTube about a particular problem with your house, chances are good you're going to run across a this old house video. That is true. I've yep. done that because yep. they they probably have thousands of videos now where they'll they'll take you know a segment and um, and do that. So that that would be my my resource, and I guess Dave's as well that he really likes. It would songs. it would be mine. I, I don't know. I, I wouldn't say that I follow. People or DIYers or people in the construction industry. Maybe it's because that's, I mean, that's kind of my job. And so when I get home, <laughs> I need a break from that. But it, it's almost like it's a requirement. So when something breaks, like my first thought is, how am I going to fix this? So I'm usually going to YouTube. And like Tim said, I often come across uh, this old house video. So recently I had to replace the flange underneath my toilet. And, uh, I was on YouTube, like, looking up how to do that, and so ran across this old house stuff. So, yeah, definitely. Yeah. This old house, YouTube, endless supply of information. Uh, for me, most recently, I've, I've been following quite a few custom home builders, high-end custom home builders uh, and home renovators uh, on Instagram. And I kind of keep up with them daily. They have, they post daily stories. And a, if you don't know, a story is just a short video, but you can post, you know, 10, 20 of them a day if you want. And a lot of these guys just kind of document their day, document how, how it's going. And, and some of them show you their, their mistakes. They're, they're a wide open book, you know, so it, it gives you a chance to, to see how things are done 
correctly and to see that even the pros screw up and the pros have to go back and undo work and make it right. Um, so Instagram it, for me right now is is where I'm going it, to to kind of really see where the DIY space is. Good, good, Dave. Before we take a break, give us a little uh, a little teaser of what you're gonna your segment's gonna be. So this week we are going to determine definitively on this podcast who is the best DIYer. This episode is sponsored by 1776 United. 1776 United is a patriotic and historically inspired lifestyle brand. They make the best patriotic shirts and apparel on the market today. I personally own many of their products, and if you want to don patriotic gear without looking gaudy, check them out on Instagram, Facebook, and at 1776united.com. All right, guys, welcome back. Uh, so every show, we do a segment where one of us will research a topic. It can be whatever that person wants. just has to be somewhat DIY related. Maybe it's tool related, something. And the other two people have no idea what this person is going to bring to the table. So, Dave, it is your week. It's my week. What you got for us? All right. So this week, uh, this time on You Can Man, we are going to play You Can Man Trivia. Wow. Okay. <laughs> All okay. right. <laughs> yeah. I know you guys are excited. I can see it on your faces. Uh-huh. Yep. So I have uh, <laughs> developed, put are together. You gonna, hold on. Hold on. Because <laughs> okay, cause we don't know what you're going to ask. You have uh, no idea. No. All I need to know is. Am I going to sound like an idiot? Uh, I don't think so. So I put a lot of thought into this, and all of these questions are, I think, relatively easy. So these I don't want to say easy. These aren't things that are going to be on the PE test for these are engineering not, or anything. These are not uh, questions that I pulled off the professional engineer's exam that I took and passed. <laughs> uh, failed first, but uh, yeah, failed the first time. I was going to say, how many times did you take yeah, it? Yeah, twice. Um, I would have to take it like 10 times. <laughs> not easy, but these are not those questions. So We um, trust that you're not going to totally embarrass us. Yeah, I'm not yeah. trying to jam you guys up. I think they, some of them might, might even be too easy, but here's how this is going to work. All right, so we're going to have three rounds, uh, three questions in each round, okay? So in round one, each question is worth one point. Round two, each question is worth two points. Round three, three points. Okay. At the end, if the game if if the game is competitive, we're going to have a, a bonus round, right? And so for the bonus round, you can wager anywhere from zero points up to your point total, okay. like like Jeopardy, just like, like Jeopardy. Daily double. So your your name is your buzzer, okay? Oh. And uh, I, I didn't I didn't write the rules down, so I'm going, I'm, I'm going off of memory. But also, all right. So if you miss a question. I'm not deducting points. Okay. Okay. But if you miss a question, I'm going to give your adversary uh, a chance to answer. Got it. Okay. So I have to say, when you answer, when you ask the question, I have to say, Tim. Tim. You got to okay. say, Tim. Okay. Your, okay. your name is your buzzer. Uh, and I'll give you a reasonable amount of time to answer. I am final. I'm judge and jury. All right. So we're, we're I'm not, in your hands. If there, you got okay. problems here, sorry. <laughs> Too bad. Yeah. I, this is going to be interesting because I'm just not competitive. All right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Tim is not competitive, but you don't want to look like an idiot. So yeah, this this is true. <laughs> Get it together. All right. So you guys ready? I ready. Guess so. Okay. All right. Round one. Question one. Uh, we're just going to start it off right. Who is the original host of this old house? Tim. Tim, what's your answer? If you hadn't, dang it. <laughs> Josh. <laughs> See, he had time to think. I was right on the Bob top of my head. No, yes. Josh, right. that is correct. He's I'm, totally right. I'm confused as to why Tim didn't. I, I just drew a complete blank. <laughs> oh, I, you blank. <laughs> no, look. I envisioned Bob Vila's face in my head. His yes, beautiful totally. bearded face. And then I couldn't think of his name. Well, Tim, I will say that question was absolutely geared toward you. I was like, Tim's going to get this. I'm going to go ahead and say oh, I like Kevin O'Connor better than Bob Vila. Yeah. So there was a host in between, though. You oh, know, really? there, there was a host. Oh, in, there was a host in between. So so Vila, uh, Vila served on as the main host on this old house for 10 years from 79 to 89. And he had, I guess, kind of, I don't really remember because I didn't watch back then. But so Norm Abram has been on there since then. And he was kind of like a co-host back then, too. He was listed as a host, but he wasn't the main host. Norm's been there since the beginning. Yeah, day one. And he, st yeah, he's still there, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. 
Yep. All right. So, uh, all right. So I got to keep score here. We don't have a scorekeeper, so I'm gonna have to do it. Um, so Josh, one point. Okay. All right. Next question. What is the actual size of a two by four? Tim. Josh, I'm gonna go with Tim. Oh, I'm, going, I'm going with Tim. All right. So actual size. Actual of a dimensions two by four is one and a half inches by three and a half inches. Ding, ding, ding. That is correct. So two by four, for those of you who don't know, that's a nominal dimension. It's not the actual size of the member. So boards were originally cut to two by four, two inches by four inches. But by the time the boards were dried and planed, uh, they're smaller. So that's kind of changed uh, as the years have progressed. And we've arrived now at an inch and a half by three and a half inches because the two by four is the rough sawn lumber size correct right yeah okay. nominal dimensions so yeah okay. all right neck and neck uh one point for tim one for josh question three what is the typical color of a neutral wire in a u.s josh. electrical box josh white correct white or gray mm, okay. nice. could be gray so that's one of the few colors that's actually specified in the electrical code so at the end of round one we have two points for Josh, one for Tim. You guys All ready right. for round two? Not for it. long. <laughs> <laughs> All right, round two. So the points, the, so questions are getting slightly more difficult as we go along, right? Okay. Right. And so each question here is worth two points. First question of round two, what letter is used to rate insulation's resistance to conductive Josh. heat flow? Dang it. Josh. R. That is correct. See, Josh is just, his brain just jo- is so much quicker than mine. His brain is faster. I have a, we can talk about that later. Josh and I used to play Jeopardy <laughs> together every let's, night. Let's tell that story later. Yeah. Uh. His, his, his brain is quicker. All right, question two. What is the name of the structural portion of a set of stairs? Josh. Dang it. Josh. Stringer. That is correct. Yep, that's totally right. Tim, Stringer. you know this. It hurts me that I'm Josh is, is I winning. Well, I, I know these things. I'm just, I'm just not quick. Maybe I'll just. You know what? I'll just preemptively say my name again. <laughs> you don't lose points if you oh, inc- no okay, no points well, are deducted if you oh, get it incorrect. I do have a technicality though. I think you can only say your name after the complete question what, has been asked. Now I did, I did not specify that, but okay, whatever. we can we can go with it if you All want. Right, let's like, just roll with but it. But if we both know it, we're going to say it at the same time. Like, follow your heart, and oh, I'll always okay. end up in the right spot. Okay, here we go. Uh, question three. Uh, what are the two most common drywall thicknesses for non-curved walls? Tim. Oh. Tim. Half inch and five-eighths. That is correct. Now, I didn't know this, um, but... Other thicknesses out there are quarter inch and three eighths that are often used for curved walls. I, don't, I didn't know that. I'd never heard that, but evidently that's the thing. That's cool. And they do have a different size, I think, for a special sound insulating drywall that I think may even be thicker. Than, I may have that wrong. I think it might even be thicker than five eighths, but that sounds really large. That'd be thick. That but, would be okay, sorry. Go All on. right. So at the end of round two, I think that's the end of round two. Yes. Uh, we have uh, six points for Josh, three points for Tim. So Tim... I got some catching up yeah, to do. Yeah, some catching up to okay, do. Okay, so this is the last round. Last round, last three questions. Each of them are worth three points. All right, first question. GFCI outlets are commonly found in today's Josh. home bathrooms and kitchens and protect against circuit overload and electrical shock. What does GFCI stand for? Josh. Josh. <laughs> See, what's your answer, Josh? I was Ground just, fault circuit interrupter. That is correct. Nice. Good job, yeah, Josh. Yeah, right. I yeah, I didn't. That's that, so. That's one of the ones I didn't know. Uh, okay, so basically, it's almost game over because I can only get a potential of six more points. Well, we do have a bonus round. Don't forget oh, that. Oh, that's true. That's true. Okay. okay. All right. Double your next question. Total. Second question of round three. You guys ready? Yeah, I guess. Name the five main paint finishes. Tim. Tim. Five main paint finishes. Okay, I actually didn't know. He needs a lifeline. Call his wife. (laughs) There are no lifelines. Yeah, it's funny. Didn't I mention in one of the episodes that I hate doing painting and my wife always does (laughs) We all hate it. Or I hire that out, which is crazy because I'm a DIYer. So five main paint finishes. Five main. Okay, so I've got flat. Correct. I've got matte. I've got semi-gloss, gloss. What am I missing? <laughs> flat, semi-gloss, matte. Flat and matte. Glo- gloss. You know what? 
Are you tricking me here? I'm not tricking you. <laughs> I'm going to give you five more seconds, okay. and then I'm going to turn it over to Josh. S- Dang it. I don't think I can steal because he's I, already listed three of them, right? That, the three of the them. Rules, the the rules them. state that you can steal the question. I'm going to say answer. high gloss. Okay, uh, well, you got he, some of them. I'll I know, say that. I know he's missing eggshell. Okay, and there's one more. Um, you know, he's not wrong. <laughs> <laughs> there's one more. <laughs> I, I, I can't. I can't think. All right. So the five no main. Nobody. Wait, did I did I say oh, one that there satin? Were? I said that. That is correct. No, no, I didn't. You say, didn't, I didn't say, say satin. You said flat and matte. I can't, that's the same thing. That doesn't count for me though. That was way too late. All right. So the five we've confused everybody. You know the what? Five main I'm thinking. Ones. I got. Yeah, I'm thinking like prints. That's why I said. <laughs> so you've got gloss, semi gloss, satin, eggshell, and flat. Now I thought that satin and eggshell were the same, but mm-hmm. they're not. All the women listening to the show are like, yeah, they're yeah. screaming yeah, at, at their radios right yeah, now. Yeah, good, good. Uh, yeah, well, Hannah, how are you going to break up that, that points? Then? Well, we didn't either. Nobody, either yeah, nobody, gets, nobody gets any points there. Okay. All right, last question of regulation. Question three Name the three main components of concrete. Josh. Josh, what's your answer? Sand, gravel, water. That is incorrect. Okay. Now, Tim, <laughs> three main components of concrete. The th- okay. The three ingredients. Oh, I'm stupid. I'm going to say um, s- sand. I <laughs> say I know this. I know this. Sand, freaking Portland cement, yep. Yep. and water. That's incorrect. No. Por- here we go. Sand. Oh, I can't steal it, but sand, Portland cement. Stop c- saying sand. And aggregate. Really? Sand is not in it. Not, it's that's it's a, not. The three main components are water, Portland cement, aggregate, aggregate. and aggregate. Portland cement. Okay. So aggregate, for okay. those of you who don't know, is a bunch of rocks of varying size, uh, and that's what gives concrete. Now there's a bunch of concrete guys yelling at us. So. Yeah. yeah. Like idiots. And my dad. My dad's also yelling. Yep. So uh, no points uh, hey, but for I anybody the there. the Portland cement bit. Yeah, okay. that was a good. Now we can. So Josh is is way ahead with uh, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and jo- Tim has three. So can't I don't, steal. I, I don't. I don't know if it makes sense to do the to, to do the bonus round, but we can do it for fun if you guys want. Got to do it. So right. but you're basically you're saying I'm hopeless at this well, point. Well, so yes. yeah, because you would you would wager three points. To get to get up to six, and Josh would just <laughs> wager zero and still be gotcha. in the lead. Okay, well, so whatever. All right, um, we'll just do it the same. We'll do the same format. Your name is your buzzer, and actually, we can't do that. We've got to write it down. You have to write it down. All right, so I'm gonna give each of you a piece of paper. Okay, Tim, you, you got a pen over there, Josh. And Josh. Yep. Okay, so write down on your piece of paper the answer to this question. In what year was the Lowe's company founded? Oh, dang. Wow, interesting. Hmm. hmm. Well, we can't just, like, have silence while we're, while we're thinking this. Thing. I wrote we mine could. down. Oh, you're, oh, you're, we you're, could have you're some elevator gotta, music. You're game to go. Oh, I'm going to say. It's not a lot of thinking to do. Um, you either got it or you don't. <laughs> Not do you think you got it? No, I don't. I just it was a, shot a in the number dark? came in my mind and I wrote it down. Wow. Okay. All right. There's my there's my answer. Okay. So, um, Tim, I was I was with you on this, and we were both wrong. So, uh, Tim says 1985. Josh says 1941. Wow. Yeah. Way so off. it was founded in 1946. Wow. I thought that right L- I, for war. whatever reason, I thought that Lowe's was not as old as Home Depot, but it's, it's way older. Okay. it's way older. Clearly, clearly, it was definitely not in the current in its current form. It, okay, so good point. It was actually it was actually the first Lowe's store was started in 1921. Okay, by uh, Lucius Smith Lowe. He passes away, hands the, the the store down to his daughter, and you know it changes hands. But anyway, in its current form, it was founded in 1946 in North Wilkesboro, hmm. North Carolina. Interesting. North Carolina. I was just thinking North that Carolina. maybe they came up as a competitor to Home Depot. And that's uh, okay. Huh. Interesting. Yeah. Good to know. Yeah, it's been around a long time. Well, so, so, so they just weren't the behemoth that they were up until recent history. Correct. They were a small, it sounds like a small mom and pop back in the 20s. Gotcha. And then wow. kind of evolved from there. So now we know the reason that I wanted to play this game is because a couple podcasts ago, when Tim asked me, 
He said, Dave, on a scale of one to 10, how, what's your DIY level? And I said, a seven. Josh pipes in and says, well, if Dave's a seven, I'm higher than that. <laughs> so I was like, we got to find out. So now yeah. we know it well, goes Josh, Tim, Dave. Yeah, when, when you're roommates with somebody like, like we there's, were, we're allowed to have that there's relationship. There's a lot of, yeah, just you know, yeah. a, a lot of um, competitive drive there for sure. Go. Right. Anyway, good job, Josh. Good hey, can, job, I, Tim. can I say one thing before Absolutely. we close out confession time? In our first episode, I said, I haven't taken my car to a mechanic in 12 oh, years. Tim's setting the record straight. Yeah. So I do need to set that straight because I actually have, because I got to thinking about it afterwards. It was an honest mistake. I'm so disappointed. I, I take my car so little that I really did think that in the past 12 years I haven't, but I have. I had a small issue with the Explorer. And I did take it to a mechanic because it was a pinion bearing something. It was a pretty difficult job, and I just thought— Got to have a special tool. I don't, yeah, stuff like that. So I took it somewhere. And then I did have a friend who was a mechanic. He used to have a shop and closed down the shop. Anyways, I had him do a timing chain on our old Honda Accord. So just confession time. Now I can well, sleep I, at I, night I, now. I, now I that feel, you. <laughs> thank you. I feel so much better. <laughs> so wait. Man, I was yeah. waiting to call you out. But you called yourself. Yeah, I was just envisioning people hearing that and thinking. (laughs) There's no way. Right. (laughs) It does happen. Happens to the best of us. Yeah. so. So to close us out, thank you guys so much for listening on our third episode. Still new to this game, this podcast game. And so we're getting better every episode. So we really appreciate the time that you've taken to listen. I hope that today's episode has given you a really clear idea behind why we do what we do. Why are we so into DIY and why do we love it so much? As always, please take time to subscribe to our podcast. Check us out on Instagram. Check out our show notes at youcanman.com and we'll see you next time. 